is guys, it's your boy Blasphemous HD, and as it is daytime outside, I figured it'd be a perfect time to probably scare the living crap out of myself. So today, we're gonna check out a couple of extremely scary babysitting horror stories. And the third story is going to be me telling you guys my babysitting horror story. You know what I mean? This is really gonna be three disturbing true babysitting horror stories, because I'm gonna tell mine at the end. Let's do this. Up until the age of 12 in 2010, my parents always insisted I have a babysitter. I guess my being an only child had a lot to do with it. It might have gone on longer, but something happened with the last babysitter I ever had. He was 18 years old. His name was James. It was the second time he was watching me overnight. Looking back now, I can see him as a really awkward, creepy kid. He didn't really say much, and he apparently didn't know what personal space was. So anyway, I was watching my favorite TV show in the living room, and James came down from the room he was supposed to sleep in. He came into the living room and just sat down on the couch behind me. He didn't say anything or make any noise after that, so naturally, I eventually turned around to see him looking at me. It was weird. I don't remember if I found it creepy or not, but I do remember laughing shyly. Then he broke the silence between us and asked me if I wanted to play a video game. I wasn't really into video games. That was more of a boy thing, but I said yes anyway. He went upstairs to my dad's room and grabbed his Xbox 360. It was weird that he even knew that was there, but nevertheless, I didn't ask anything. Maybe my dad told him about it. James went about setting up the Xbox in the living room, and he put on what I think was Halo 2. I wasn't much of a gamer, and it became obvious quickly since he killed me like 10 times in a row. James decided to take it upon himself to get up and show me how to play better. He grabbed both my hands and tried to mimic the controls so that I could get a feel for what buttons did what. But the way he was standing so close, it made me a bit uneasy. His body was literally leaning against mine as his hands held mine while I held the controller. This went on for some time before I shyly said I don't like this game and wanted to stop. He looked upset and then said okay as he sat back down on the couch and continued to play on his own. I went upstairs to my room to watch TV and at some point I fell asleep with the TV on. I know because I woke up to the glaring light of the TV in my dark room. As soon as I sat up, the springs in my mattress made a crunching noise. But underneath that sound, I could swear I heard a shuffling noise come from somewhere in my room. I wanted to call for James because I was scared, but I didn't want to make too much noise. All I did was look around my room as I sat up in my bed, afraid I was going to find someone. Then my eyes stopped on the closet door, which was half open. I squinted my eyes to see better but when a white screen came up on the TV, it gave off enough light to reveal James standing in my closet. If you go hide in the closet, why the hell would you leave the door open? It makes no sense. I let out a noticeable gasp, and I guess he noticed. He came out slowly, going, shh, shh, it's okay, with his arm. Yeah, homie sound like a rapist. That's real. This sounds like rape. Arms out. I sat there frozen in fear as he came closer, telling me how pretty he thought I was. No. I knew what he was doing. No. And when I saw an opportune moment for me to slip through him into the door, I took it. I knew to run to the office downstairs, which had a lock, but not before grabbing a phone to call my dad. James knocked on the door, claiming he wasn't going to do anything, begging me not to call my dad. Now, I don't know a whole lot about uh, dudes who take advantage of females sexually. Weirdly enough, me being as perverted as I am, I 100% I believe no is an invitation to give them pills. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It means no. No means no. Never put your hands on a girl or anybody for that matter if they don't want you to. But, uh, but yeah, if someone starts trying to be like, no, 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 it's not what it looks like. It's always what it looks like. Otherwise, why would it have looked that way for you to think it looked that way? You know what I'm saying? Dad was of course furious on the phone and told me to stay where I was and he'd be home in an hour. But by then, James left. 
It didn't matter though, because my parents had his parents' information, and they called the police promptly, who I explained what happened to. James was arrested on some kind of charge for sexual misconduct with a minor, or something like that. Ever since that day, I was trusted to be alone without a babysitter. And it's weird, but I still think about James at least once every other day. Bruh, I just don't understand why niggas just won't go out and just find of age females. Mm. I said goodbye to my mom as I hung up the phone and walked up the stairs to Tyler's house, the kid who I'd be babysitting. I greeted his mom at the door, who was in a hurry. She told me everything over the phone so that she'd be able to leave as soon as I got there. She hurried into the cab out front and headed off to the airport. Tyler was five years old and had autism, so I knew watching him was going to be a bit of a challenge. At first I had to get myself accustomed to Tyler's behavior and ways of interacting, but I got used to it and learned to accommodate him. I would hear him talking to himself a lot in different rooms, usually I'd assume he was playing, but sometimes it seemed like he was literally just talking to himself. I'd be watching Tyler for the whole weekend. On the first night, I woke up to Tyler's laughing outside of the room I was sleeping in. <laughs> I was confused when I saw the bedroom door open, because I knew I had closed it. I went to see where Tyler was. His laughs were coming from his room. A crack in the wood floor made his laughter suddenly stop, and then the light from his room suddenly went dark, and I heard him jump into bed. I wasn't even halfway across the hallway yet. I still called out to Tyler to stay in bed. Then I went back to sleep. The next day I asked him what he was doing. I couldn't get much more of a response out of him than I don't remember. For the rest of the day I tried to play games and watch TV with him. He seemed more interested in playing in his room upstairs though, so I let him be and watch TV myself. Basically until the sun went down, minus making dinner and other smaller chores. Eventually the time came for bed and I tucked Tyler in, making sure to tell him to stay in his bed this time. I went to sleep no more than an hour later. Once again, I was woken up by a noise. It was a giggling noise. Then I heard whispering. It had to be Tyler. I sat up, rubbed my eyes, and looked around the room. Tyler? I called out. There was the giggling again. It came from across the room. I flicked on the lamp, and there was Tyler, sitting in the closet with the door slid half open, revealing only his face. I have to admit, it was a disturbing thing to witness at two in the morning. The shade and angle of the light hitting his face made the sight even more disturbing. I got up and went over to him to pull him out of the closet. I was upset with him and let him know it. I brought him back to his bed and asked him why he did that. His response was unsettling. He said Tony told him to. I asked him who Tony was. He said it was the man in the closet he was talking to. My heart skipped a beat as he said this. Still, I knew it was just his wild imagination going off again. I told him to stay in bed for real this time or there would be consequences. I went back to my guest room and shut the door. As I laid in bed, I thought about what Tyler said. About the man in the closet. Why would he say that? I lay on my side and for the longest time tried my best to clear my head and just go to sleep. But there was a sudden sound of something hitting the closet door. Almost like a knee or something. It was definitely not the sound of an object falling or hitting the door. I called out Tyler's name, hoping it was just him playing games again. No answers. So now I called out Tyler louder loud enough for him to hear me across the hall and in his room. He called back yes down the hall. At that moment, I basically jumped out of bed and ran to Tyler's room to get him out of his bed. I carried him to a bathroom where we hid while I called the cops. I stayed on the line with the 911 operator, only whispering occasionally that we were still okay to the operator until the cops finally banged on the door downstairs. I heard them open the front door, which was weird should have been locked. They shouted police, to which I responded to by running with Tyler in my arms to the living room. The rest of the story is history. The intruder in the closet who was talking to Tyler walked out the front door, 
And by the next day, that was the end of me and that family. I don't know whatever happened after that, but I hope that whoever was in that closet never returned to that house. See, most people have roaches. Sometimes, man, I guess if you live in certain areas, man, you just, you get infested with people. Sometimes they're homeless, and sometimes they're prostitutes who are mad because you don't have the money to pay them. Never do the work first. What's, what's my, you know what I mean? What am I, what am I supposed to do? I'm sorry, I'm not, not sorry. Okay, so this story is perverted as hell, man. And I actually plan on getting this story animated for you guys. I know a lot of people can't usually remember when they're younger, but I remember a lot of my memories. I was very conscious as a young person. I was like four years old and I had this babysitter named Taffy. The thing I liked about Taffy the most was them titties. She had the nicest pair of freaking titties, man. I don't know what it was. They were just perfect. And me, I've always loved women. I've always had a thing for women, even when I was younger. And I remember this. I remember specifically masterminding a plan to touch her breast specifically. I remember exactly what my plan was because Taffy was super duper comfortable with all of us. My mom loved her. And you already know, you know what I mean? Like when you're a babysitter and the kids are younger, you can pick them up or hold them and play with them and stuff. So my plan was this, yo, so if I go over to Taffy and hold my hands up like this, she's gonna pick me up. And when she picks me up, that's when I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get at the titty meat, right? So I'll never forget this. I remember specifically waiting until my mom left, specifically waiting until my brothers and sisters went to sleep. I went downstairs with Taffy, was by herself watching some television show, sat next to her, and acting like there was something wrong with me, like I was crying, I had to go to the bathroom or something. I was like, up, oh, up, oh, Taffy, up, oh, I'm four years old. I, I swear to God, she picked me up. And I guess my plan wasn't that well thought out. Like, my plan was, okay, as a four-year-old, I knew I was four and that I shouldn't have gotten consequences for touching the titty. I planned on acting like it was an accident. I thought that was gonna work. When she picked me up, I just reached out and grabbed both her titties with both hands and I started squeezing them and like, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Doing everything that someone with a fascination with breasts like me would do if he got, you know what I mean? Like a free pass to touch some titty. Females still have this level of intuition when it comes to situations, especially involving men, they know exactly what your plan is and was. They know exactly what you did and why you did it. And I did not expect for her to know that. I'm like, I'm four. You gotta, you know what I mean? You said, I should get a pass. She looked at me, cause, and I remember what I did wrong. I still to this day remember how I messed that up. I grabbed her titties and started squeezing the shits and then looked up at her. Like, I know I'm wrong, but I can't get in trouble for this, right? Bruh, this chick damn near threw my ass like in one of those heat memes. This soda can is empty. Yeet! Like, she dang near threw me, dude. At least she made sure that I landed on the couch. My mom gets home, my mom beat the crap out of me, and locked me in my dark room, which was like the scariest thing in the world to me because I was scared of the dark. And I, th I believe Taffy quit. After that, the fascination with TD Meat has not gone away. <laughs> I'm a lot less straightforward in grabbing the titty meat now. I ask, I make sure that the chick is with it before I go for the titty meat. But God, Jesus. Ah. Oh. <sighs> I give her titties a 9.5 out of like seven. Point five. Like it was really, really good titty. But yo, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. Just blast message D. Twism.